Wow, we should not write Purple Hives. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to The Story Thinker, a Webtoons and Witcher podcast for superfans with scene-by-scene analysis. Featuring sharp co-hosts for a fuller picture, we dive deep into character psychology, relationships, and theories. We'd love it if you could like, subscribe, comment, and rate us on all podcast platforms and social media. For bonus content, you can support The Story Thinker on Patreon. Let's begin. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 156 of Purple Hyacinth, Loathsome Lies with Mossy and Bundoon. Hello. Hello. <laughs> awesome. So I feel like we're, um, you know, we had a lot of chippy content lately, a lot of soft moments, a lot of tender moments, and now we're getting back into like the anxiety, the tension, <laughs> drama, yes. the excitement. The, the things plot that make is thickening. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. You know, I think every story, it's good if it has all those elements because, you know, you want nice things and sweet things, but you also want to have things that make your heart race. I guess there's other, you know, there's different ways of making your heart race, but yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. dramatic way. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. And we need the the action as well. We can't all be just happiness and ships and soft interactions. Yeah. That's pH. We need to have the action. Yeah. And I, I do love the action as well. I feel like especially... I think this episode has reminded me that it is very much a mystery because I'm I'm confused. There there are I have a lot of thoughts and a, a lot of things which I enjoy. It was also like, yeah, what what is happening? Like, what is being set up here? There's there's so many questions. Like, yep, it's I mean, it, it is a mystery. We're not supposed to do everything yet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just let yeah. let the story take us, and we can like think about it as we go. But at the end of the day, we only know so much. Exactly. It's it's always fun theorizing, but yeah, I think with the, this episode, with the past few episodes, sort of trying to like piece everything together, and I, I really feel like a, a little bit of a clown trying to like connect all of the various things. Like, I'm sure Soph and F know what they're doing, and I don't know what they're doing, and I'm sure we'll find out. And it's fun trying to piece it together, but I also feel a little bit foolish. So I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm, I'm actually getting any of this correct. <laughs> Aww. Mm-hmm. It'll be yeah. Good. No. Oh. Remind me, there was a really good theory that someone brought up yesterday. I took a screenshot of it. I forget. Let me look at it right now because I want to Emily remember. shared it, I think. Oh, I, yes. I, I t- made her share it. Yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't her yeah. theory. It was something she found on Twitter. Twitter, yeah. Oh, she sent it in the link. Yeah, she sent it in my All DMs right. and I saw it. I was like, what? no way. And then I read more and I was like. <laughs> yeah. <Or> maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I think we can discuss it at the end. I think that's where it comes in. All right. So cool. remind me if I forget. <laughs> We'll do. All right, so let's get into it. Um, we start off where we left off last time, where Kim and March are staring at each other. And like March is it's the first time we've seen March with that face. Like he was so nice. And now he's like, I'm gonna I, <laughs> I mean, they are in the middle of a gunfight right now. Like let's take Maybe. a little serious now. But yeah, he did lie mm-hmm. about not knowing about these things so you know big revelation to the main yeah squad. yeah he's he's definitely I don't, I don't know I'm still tr- struggling to figure out what exactly his his deal is and yeah what what his intentions are what his motivations are but right now he's being those these lies they, they keep adding up and like, these are these are not good things to be lying about March no well it is- yeah let's talk about them maybe maybe and then at the end we can we can come up with twisted ways in which this can all be good mm-hmm. <laughs> sounds good <laughs> our optimistic brain mm. trying <laughs> to be in denial <laughs> <laughs> mm. all right so um this part i couldn't tell if this is lauren talking or if that's just kim thinking stay calm act normal pretend you don't know anything is this kim thinking or lauren i thought talking? that was lauren I... through the thing okay because i forgot oh, I should have maybe yeah something. That makes sense. I assumed it was Kim thinking, but I, Thoughts I think also are usually I could... black, black speech bubble, mm, white. That's writing. true. Really? Oh my right. gosh! Why did I never? Think Interesting. Of that? And look, you're right I... because Lauren talking to her is square in the people. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, good eye, good eye. Yeah, they use oh. the different types of bubbles to kind of indicate if it's thoughts, if it's words, oh. and if it's a transmission. That which makes is sense. Cool. That Visual is very cool. Things. Love that. <laughs> Thoughtful. I never paid attention. Yeah, no. me either. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool <laughs> yes very cool all right so kim close her eyes and she like shakes her head you know clear clears it and then she's like careful march and she pulls him up aboard i think right mm-hmm. 
and they are jumping in on board and then there's the shootout there's the massive shields which look a little cute because they're like <laughs> they're like <laughs> characters of their own you know and they're getting shot at so it is seriously dangerous i'm like oh my god why are you not wearing like more stuff to protect your neck i'm like terrified for them but whatever i finished the episodes i know they don't die so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it sounds. laughs> but when i was reading it i was like i was i was scared for them for you <laughs> Yes, yeah, Sam. Now, yeah, Kim's got her plot armor. They tried to kill her earlier. That's this season. I feel like she's good for the rest of it. At least <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I feel like I'm fully on board the sort of train of thought. I don't think any of the main characters will die. I think we'll see potentially important side characters dying. Like I could definitely see Marsh dying at some point, mm-hmm. whether or not he's good or bad. But like Lauren, Kieran, Kim, Will, I just I don't think any of them are gonna die. I mean, especially Lauren, Kieran. Unless it's like the, the last episode, like how would how would the how would the story go on without them? Um, but Kim and Will as well. It's just like I think to me, Purple Hyacinth just doesn't really read like that type of story. I think it's ultimately like tragic things happen, but it's not like a tragedy. Um, so in the moment, I'm always scared, but I'm also like I think they all kind of the main characters have plot armor, so I'm not super scared. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't think that any of these, ca- like, each of them also have ongoing plot points that have not been resolved, ongoing arcs, like, well, yeah. like, his whole family is a mess, he's not gonna yeah. die before we find out about all that, because why, like, what is the point, he has to get exactly. through, like, learning his family history and stuff, that's something he has to do, um, mm. Kieran also has his arc with, like, you know, getting over the the of scythe and then maybe blackmailing him events that will happen later in this episode that might lead to that <laughs> um lauren's main character can right. have yeah. to run in with death earlier so she'll they'll be fine i yeah. you know, he i think every other person in this gunfight is fair game i think march could potentially be taken out this arc maybe even tristan mm. too even though he's been shown to be well on the sidelines um, if Lauren's location was was um, found somehow, and we only, only a few people knew it, maybe Tristan's was as well. We don't know. Mm. I'm just saying. I think that something things are going to happen that's going to be messy. Yeah. No, I I agree with that. I think it the, the it feels like things are sort of I don't know the the action and sort of is 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 building up and things are getting intense. And so I could definitely see this arc and or this season as a whole ending with the death i mean of course we have the mysterious he's dead so somebody dies mm-hmm. um and this been you know of course a lot debated who who is that person <laughs> um and i think there's a lot of possibilities but i don't think lauren kieran kim or will are gonna die right? nah. yeah all right, so Lauren instructs her to try to stay close to him, and she's anxious. She's probably super anxious, by the way, because she doesn't know they have plot armor, and she's like, oh, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, oh, she can't see Lord. anything. She's just hearing everything, so she has Oh, that must be so stressful. It reminds <laughs> me of, like, whenever you see, like, old movies, and they're listening to the radio for, like, a sports thing or whatever, and mm. she's like, not even have a TV or watch this unless you were actually there. So imagine you're just Lauren, like, Please don't get shot. Please don't get shot. <laughs> oh my god, absolutely. And yeah, just the anxiety. She's like, oh, hearing all this gunfire and not knowing, unless you know, if you hear like like screams of pain, like not knowing like who who was that? Like who what's going on? Gosh, I know. Terrible. So yeah, so back on board, there's the APD. Will and Kim are hiding behind some barrels. Will says, Yeah, I don't think there's gonna be a lot of talking right now. <laughs> <laughs> smart boy and yeah. now we see that tristan was also listening in because he is peering through his binoculars and he says okay it's noted about march stay still for now lauren liddell hawks there's not much we can do with that concrete proof i'm very impressed they brought tristan in did you did you expect that tristan would be in on this i wasn't sure honestly i i feel like i i wasn't fully expecting it when it happened i was like okay yeah i guess that makes sense just because I, I'm sure, you know, I mean, he he and Lauren are, are close, and I'm sure, obviously, he wants to keep Lauren safe, but I, it didn't fully surprise me that she would have, yeah, he would have sort of brought her on board, especially since she had the bodyguards outside her door, which we saw earlier, um, but I also wasn't fully expecting it, so it was, it was a, a mix of surprise, but also, like, okay, yeah, I can, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, someone had to equip her with all this stuff and, like, get the frequency, and I think, he because at the beginning of the series we see that he doesn't really fully believe in her lie detecting ability so Mm. it's kind of nice to see with everything that's happened with them 
and you know her being loon and all that and him being let in on everything and them working together he's come to sort of trust that mm. part of her um so it, it just made me happy to know that he was involved which I mean he probably insisted that he would be involved in everything that she would do going forward which is why she's in the room in the first place and not like at the scene mm. so well even if she like maybe hidden somewhere at the scene potentially but you know she's off wherever and and it's just nice that they're all sort of coordinating so that the information is shared amongst them and they can all keep tabs on what's going on which is cool right mm-hmm. yeah it's like oh <laughs> you'll forget about this a long long time ago i wrote a song for purple hyacinth called secret it was a great <laughs> song but now it's totally not relevant because there's like no secret <laughs> between the characters that i wrote it about so oh man, that's so fun yeah, i totally forgot about that song i really should do <laughs> rip <laughs> Anywho, that's hilarious. So um, he's watching from the roof and he says, the fight has already started and we need to focus on disabling the Phantom Scythe. Liddell and Hawks, keep an eye on Mark for any suspicious movements. Are they not? <laughs> of course, he could hear them nodding. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking that there was, maybe they're looking at each other just to kind of affirm that each other heard it, but like... <laughs> like... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he has binoculars, yeah, but it seems pretty busy on board, but... <laughs> So, yeah. Right. <laughs> and then he says, officers on deck. Okay, so now he's on the radio. Officers on deck. Disable the phantoms without harming. Shoot only if necessary to defend yourselves, which is very nice. You know, he has, they have, you know, trying to preserve life over here. Mm-hmm. Even, um, yeah, even when they're being attacked. This, the hold of the ship must be loaded with uh, firearms and explosives. We can't risk having misdirected bullets. Okay, fine. So there's also that, but I think, yeah. <laughs> they have principles. I mean, I- I think we've seen, I mean, when we saw, like, you know, the factory arc with Lauren and Kieran, they, even though, of course, the Phantoms were trying to kill them, they were, for the most part, just disabling people and, and only killed, you know, of course, we have that moment where Kieran picks up the gun and kills people for the first time to to save Kim and Will, which is just, ah, uh, so good. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I, I think it's, yeah, we, we've seen throughout that, like, obviously, Kieran and then also the APD do have more morals than the fan of side and yeah try try not to kill unless it's actually necessary <laughs> mm-hmm. also like you know legal red tape with all that they need to make sure that they're adhering to the laws because if they act above the law then that will cause more issues with them and the the whole society issue brewing yeah absolutely mm-hmm. yeah and he says our priority is to, is to moor the ship safely so that more officers can get on so you see that right now there's only like three planks that they're using to get mm-hmm. on yeah, knowing how bo- sorry, uh, it's just like um I've spent a lot of time like on the water on boats and stuff. So just like mm-hmm. if that ship is not properly tied down, it is swaying. It is gonna go try to. Drift. Oh yeah, because, <laughs> yeah. They only have an anchor and like the 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 line by the stern tied. So yeah, they really need to get that ship like tied in more. You can kind of see it mm. like, on the side that there's like a little line that's attached to the ship. Oh but, yeah, yeah they need to properly pull that in. You need to have a ship that big would need multiple points to like tie it to the dock. So cool. I love the specialized knowledge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you grow up on an island, you learn how to, your way around a boat. Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I was forced into sailing lessons for like a couple of weeks one summer and I hated it, but I remember so much. Oh, no. so, <laughs> well, cool. at least at least you learned something useful from it, you know? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in Holland, and he said, like, as part of school, you have to learn. Like, it was like in school or Boy Scouts. I think, like, in Boy Scouts, you learned how to mm-hmm. run a ship. Like, that was like a standard mm-hmm. thing you did. <laughs> so. You know, my dad has to do that as well. He was in like a scout thing here, and they would go and like learn like swimming and all that stuff in the ocean and do all these different things. Which, like, you know, still he still talks about to this day. So it clearly is impactful. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, very cool. <laughs> Um, all right, so they Will and Kim get into the fray. They start fighting. They um, there's you know a lot of, lots of clashing, and then there's this person with a bullhorn. We are the APD. Cease fire immediately. We have orders to investigate the ship. And I'm like, poor guy. Like, uh, it's not going to help. But you know, that was nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> I love he thought that he was going to get shot as soon as he finished speaking. Like, yes. that is, that happens a lot with the people. Oh, with definitely. The bullhorn. So it happened yes. last, last episode. I was sure also, but he did not get shot right away. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Good change of pace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but uh, he, well, his shield appears to be getting shot. And then someone is rolling. Is that Will? I think it's Kim. Kim? He's dark hair. 
Oh, blue. yes. Looks, yes, yes. It look, does look a little bit blue. <laughs> Very dramatic. <laughs> he's rolling and he's coming from above. Right. And smashing yes. his hat off. The captain or some sailor. <laughs> and then there's um, Fushing. That's Kim, I think, mm-hmm. right? With the blue hair? Yeah. yeah. And Will is knocking a book or something rectangular into someone's head. <laughs> yeah. What is that? I don't know. Um, Anonymous radio? gray box. Yeah, I'm not sure why there'd be a book on the scene, but also it, it does <laughs> look book shaped. So, <laughs> well, you, know, you never know when you need a book. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I always bring a book in my purse and time I go anywhere, just like you know, in case in case of emergency, in case I'm like bored and trapped somewhere. So. Maybe oh. Will does the same. In case of emergency, take book, eat book. <laughs> Multi purpose. Entertainment <laughs> <laughs> and self defense. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but then he uses his rifle to actually, uh, you know, disable the person more thoroughly. And then Kim and Will have this adorable, yes. adorable <laughs> <thing. laughs> They're like, yeah, this is fun. Oh, I love them. <laughs> same. I, what did I sent something last night that was really funny? It's like, Kim and Will having this great chemistry in the middle of a gunfight. Meanwhile, my single ass is just yes. sitting there <laughs> reading a comic. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, ugh. They're, like, they're just beating up all these bad guys, and then they're just making cute eye contact like across the thing, the freight to each other, and it's just like, Kiwi, you need to start sailing soon, man. You're on a ship now. You need to be a ship and sail. Exactly. Come on. We've gotten so many good Kiwi moments lately, and I'm like, come on, just, just like, just a, a little bit more. Just, 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 just kiss already. <laughs> <laughs> Our main characters have it, so Are they I know. Have parts of the Caribbean moment where they kiss in the middle of the fight. Oh, uh, I would love that. Ship. I. No, I, a... I don't see them doing it. It'd be unprofessional, but. <laughs> but also. Great. I am a sucker for tropes like that. I don't care if it's unrealistic. I don't care about any of that. I'm just like, give me the passionate kiss in the middle of danger. I just, I will eat that up. <laughs> me too. Me yep. too. I, ha- I have my list of preferred tropes, literally. Like, I know exactly what I like. I just read a fantasy book over the weekend. And I was like, yep, it has every trope. And I like it. Give me more. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't care yeah. if it's done. I know what I want. I, don't want I did that. a whole oh, presentation. We had a presentation night in the server, like, a few years back. And I did a presentation on about um, Purple Hyacinth's tropes and how it appeals to fanfic readers. And it was Ooh. like, like you know, the, you have the enemies to lovers. You have uh. the coffee shop thing, you have fake dating. You have all this stuff. And it's like, I, it is candy for me. I enjoy it. Same. Not all tropes are bad. It's <laughs> fine. Let us enjoy the tropey goodness that we get. Absolutely. No, as as a, an English major, well, former English major, I graduated. But as a person with an English degree, I am, I am a firm believer that Rec- yes, recognizing some tropes are overdone. Sometimes it can be overused, etc. That's fine. But also, sometimes I just don't care. Sometimes I just want the tropes. I just want to enjoy something and not use my brain too much. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's like let's call them classics. It's like a chocolate chip cookie. Is it overused? Is it overdone? Mm. So like mm. it's delicious, and it's always going to be delicious, pretty much. Yeah, Most definitely. Yeah, not all tropes are cliche. It's <laughs> exactly. Fine. And even, and even... Are, yeah, sometimes it's exactly. like, I don't care. There's a reason why I watch Pride and Prejudice all the time. <laughs> it worked in the 1800s for Jane Austen. It works now. Why do you think it's Absolutely. still so popular? Just say Absolutely. Definitely. Fully agree. Hmm. <laughs> so yes, I am fully on board. Team Kiwi, have a kiss in the middle of this gunfight. I don't care about anything else. I want them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just have lots of gunfights. Maybe with every gunfight, they get progressively closer, and then like eventually it'll happen. I mean, there there was that thing. I can't. How many episodes back in the author's note where Soph was like, "Oh, you know, how badly do you want Kiwi to get together?" It was like, you know, like a, you know, Lauren getting kidnapped, like a hug. It was like, you know, Lauren getting shot, like whatever. And I was like, like okay, like well, maybe if we keep putting them in in gunfights, maybe we'll eventually get something. <laughs> yeah. So now they're like, "Where's March?" Oh dear! <laughs> of course, <he> was <laughs> and they're looking at him. And he's fighting away. I mean, right? And well, yeah, like, I don't understand. He's fighting back against the phantoms. And Kim's like, Lauren, are you sure? Meanwhile, I'm like, mm, who's he really shooting at? <laughs> yeah. No, I think it, the whole thing is so interesting to me because I feel like it's it's hard. Which I, I, I like this, but it, it's hard 
to get a, an accurate sense of March's character, because I feel like, you know, of course, we have these lies, which are very suspicious and very problematic things to be lying about. Um, but then we've had times where he's like truthfully told Lauren that he has her back. Um, and times like this, you know, he's, he seems like he's fighting back against the phantoms. And I, I, it's, March really intrigues me. Um, but I don't really understand. I mean, part of the reason he intrigues me is because I don't understand him. Because there's these elements. I'm like, okay, like, is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? Like, what? What is going on? <laughs> we talking about March? <laughs> yeah, and the fact I had to that for a second. Oh, that's all right. Uh, but yeah, I was just saying how I I find March intriguing. Um, because with you know, with Will saying like, oh, he's March is fighting back against the Phantoms, and sort of Kim and Will being confused about that, and saying I'm also kind of confused because March has had these things he's lied about, which are are very suspicious and problematic things to lie about. But then we've seen times where he's like truthfully told Lauren that like he has her back and he supports her, and the fact that he's fed back against the Phantoms. And so yeah, I'm just like I. I find March very intriguing, but also kind of confusing. <laughs> yeah. If he's a Snape, like, mm. triple agent. I, have I think it, but yes. I don't know. Wouldn't it be fun if he's something else mm-hmm. entirely? Wouldn't that be interesting? But, yeah, no, I, I think that, like, for now at least, he clearly, like, we talk about this in the rest of the episode, but he clearly knows way more than he let mm-hmm. on that they could have yes. known that would have made this a lot less... Like, if they had a lot more information going forward, less, like, officers would die, less people would die, potentially, they'd be able to get everything contained quickly. Right. Yeah. But I will say, if March is the leader, I think that with his philosophy, he's like, oh, you gotta, you know, break a few eggs to make an omelet. He's totally gonna be, like, okay with killing some random Phantom Scythe members. Oh, for sure. Very ruthless. He, he was willing to kill the ATSD random people, you know, to get make a point, so... Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not outside of his character as a leader. As yeah, yeah. I and mean, honestly, yeah. yeah, even if he's not the leader, even if he's just like a, an apostle or some other member, I feel like it, it wouldn't necessarily be out of the question regardless. If he's involved with the Phantom Scythe in general, mm-hmm. morals aren't really their strong suit. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like it would, it would not, I think, yeah, I think that's a good point. It would not really be that surprising that he is willing to to shoot a few of his fellow Phantom Scythe members to, to keep up the act of, of being a good guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, yep. just the fact that he's known Lauren her entire life and both of her parents were involved too, like... Yes. Everybody thinks that his wife maybe died in the print shop, like, because we never saw yeah. the year that she died. All, all Yeah, and life. the fact, and his, his, yeah, his confusing, his intentionally vague description of, oh, you know, she fell into, like, the, the like, you know, bloody the hands of criminals. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, like, the, the royals could also very easily and accurately be described as criminals. <laughs> Yeah, plus he would know about Lauren's ability if he knew her as a child. So exactly. that means that he would know how to be purposefully vague to maintain his trust. That's the thing. Yeah. I think he knows about Lauren's like ability. And then what I and then I have sort of assumed that as well. But then what makes me sort of curious is if he knows about her ability, why has he suddenly started lying so much? I mean, like of course, right now he has to know she's listening in. But there was that time, like in Herman's office, several op- episodes ago where he was just having a conversation with her and just lying out the wazoo. And so I know some people speculated, like, is he trying to, like, send her a message? Is he, like, trying to intentionally... Yeah, that was you. I couldn't have said that, but yeah. (laughs) That would be really interesting, because it's like, March, what is the reason that you're acting so sus? Yeah. also, like, mm, your actions are not making sense at all. he's, He's an odd... An interesting character. His his motivations are hard to pin down. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, listen, I remember starting at the comic thinking he was like, oh, he's such a sweet little like wimpy guy. And down uh, <laughs> <he's>, uh, <laughs> now. Mr. March with the face scar, you thought he was wimpy? Yeah. <laughs> like he was so sweet and good. <laughs> but yeah, but like wimpy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. Funny. I, I'm now gonna think of like wimpy March now. That's gonna be in my brain forever. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's great. I love it. <laughs> so Lauren now is, you know, she's like full operator mode. She's like she's gotten up from her. She's like her hands are on her desk. Like she's very, very tense and engaged. And she hears like as she hears the bullets. And she's like, okay, don't think about it now. Just focus on your operation. <laughs> Please be careful, guys. She's clearly a panicking for them. Yeah, understandably so. 
And now she's like, you know, her hands are shaking. It looks like on the desk. Mm. She says, what could that line mean though? She's thinking, what could that line mean though? Why is it that he's only started lying now? See, our question yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. Lauren, Lauren is asking, asking the important questions. <laughs> yeah, I've known him since I was a kid and he never gave me any reason to suspect him. Right, which is why I was wondering, like, you know, she never, let's see with Annabelle, she never looked into that. Like she never asked anyone, hey, what happened to his wife? Right. No one else has ever talked about it except for March. But I had obviously she's like, after this, she's definitely gonna do some research. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. If she yeah. can. We don't know how she's gonna end up after all of her. Uh, that's uh, true. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> where where Maybe might end Kim up. and Will are gonna have to be the ones that look into it. Well, that's true. I mean, yeah. If she if she's in fantasy territory, she can ask there also. That's true. Hey, by the way, uh, now that you've kidnapped me, uh, what do you what do you, what's what's the deal with Mar? Does he want you? <laughs> yes, we'll tell you everything about our entire operation, just like a Disney villain, as you're exactly. held above the vat of lava and slowly being lowered into it. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now she thinks back to his conversations right well we just talked about with annabelle she fell for the bloody hands of criminals the the, the obscured uh you know memorial we don't have a death date mm -hmm. and she said i thought he hated the faith of scythe and then he you know he's thinking he's talking the flashback there are definitely many wrong things with the current system but at the end it's about what you're prepared to do and what you'll defend with all your soul and she says i worked for him closely for months and most recently on blair's case and he continues in the flashback, I fight for what they've given me, what they should have been given in this life, right? Which is, it's again, it could be, those sentences are very idealistic sentences. It could be as mm -hmm. an officer or it could be as a <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, of course, the, the Phantom Scythe is turned into a terrorist organization. But of course, you know, the Snapdragon started out as having very peaceful and altruistic intentions. And I think some... I guess it wouldn't surprise me if some members of the Phantom Scythe, maybe even most of them, still think that they're fighting for for good mm -hmm. and think that they're doing the right thing, even though people are getting killed in the process. So, if, you know, the end justifies the means. And so I think, yeah, March could very easily be truthfully thinking that he's fighting to defend things by being part of the Phantom Scythe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know, I definitely agree with that. I think he he gives off the vibe that um you know you know the means to the end that could definitely mm. be his motivation especially after things that we think potentially happened to his wife um mm -hmm. potentially leader energy just saying just saying mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and she says we've talked things we've talked about the phantom scythe multiple times and i didn't hear anything alarming until a few days ago he couldn't have had such an abrupt change of heart in just a couple of days makes no sense but now she harkens back to the um the the fortune telling episode mm -hmm. and where she has you know she's presenting her course she says and then the reason a betrayal a painful unexpected but inevitable ending someone around you has or will stab you in the back while you cannot change their actions you have power over your response to it blindfolded you cannot see the situation clearly falsehood shadows you and lauren's thinking could that be true after all i think mm. what what interests me and maybe been reading into things too much but the specific thing that hecate mentioned you know blindfolded you can't see the situation clearly um it makes me wonder like it, what if like the you know, it seems it seems too obvious that march is the betrayer talked about so long ago so i'm thinking mm -hmm. like maybe you know lauren's thinking about this but like I'm not so sure. I'm I'm thinking maybe he's a red herring, and you know maybe she can't see the situation clearly, and so you know there, there's like some something else brewing, and she's just you know sort of thinking because yeah, I just I feel like March, it seems a little bit too obvious. It's not that unexpected because it, there's been quite a while now where he's been pretty suspicious and yeah has been telling telling lies, um, and the fact that yeah Hecate specifically said you can't see the situation clearly because you're blindfolded makes me think like I I, just, I feel like there's something else going on I think I think she's talking about somebody else and Lauren is is too blind to realize that <laughs> that's just my theory <laughs> yeah the whole thing of it being a betrayal means that she she won't see it coming so like mm -hmm. I feel like it will really be something that blindsides her in the moment that's what I feel like we're gonna get and her thinking about this with March makes it think that it's not him yeah or, or this is her being blindsided like this is like the moment where she's like oh my god yeah yeah i mean again it, it could be because you know she she is in some ways blindsided by this sort of, i mean when 
you know, last episode with, you know, the the reveal when March lied about not knowing about the shipment. Um, and so I think in some ways March does fit that. It's just, again, maybe reading things too much, but I'm like, March fits like too well. And it's just like, it seems just like too obvious. Like, of course, March is the betrayer. And so I'm just like, I don't know. Like, what if there's something else going on? Like something else, which no, no one is expecting. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down either way. Mm -hmm. huh, that was it. I think it was now, right? That the um okay, that yeah, now? No, no, later. Sorry, at the end. This is at the end. Oh, read the thing about the, the theory. All right. Mm. So she is just anxious. I really feel bad for her, by the way, because this must be like devastating as a person that the person that you grew up with trusted. Mm. And now you're like, one second, the one that said, you know, it supported you, believed in you, and now they're like might be out to get you must be horrible yeah. to contemplate that no of course obviously he's been a mentor figure towards her you know when she worked for the iu he was her like direct superior he's yeah a, a, a friend a colleague role a model. mentor role model absolutely um yeah no it, it must be so hard just sort of suddenly grappling with this like this mm -hmm. man she's known her entire life and she's looked up to a lot is is not who she thought he was <laughs> Yeah, also he's like her parents' friend, so he's basically almost like an uncle. If he if it was mm. a in my country, she would probably call him uncle in a casual mm. setting, because that's how you refer to like your parents' friends and stuff is auntie and uncle. Right, right. Makes sense. Yeah, no, absolutely. Hmm. So now she hears over the radio with the ta -ta 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 -ta, prepare to moor the ship, request cover for team C. And we see um them trying to moor the ship. They're like holding in the, the chains or the ropes. And then some people going um, on board again. There's some more fighting, whack, smash. And then Kieran's like, never knew you had such a... Oh, wait, that was March. Sorry, Will. that was March up there. Yeah. And Will, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we bring him in even if he's not here. We feel his presence in our hearts. <laughs> even now. And Will's like... Never knew he had such a knack for close combat, Detective March. You investigation unit guys are scary. Do you think he's fishing, by the way? I, yes. I, I feel like it's, I don't know. I, the, the, that whole comment from Will, I'm like, okay, Will, like, don't don't push too much. Like, <laughs> it, it definitely reads as fishing to me. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know if it's really that smart to say that to March when Lauren was telling them, like, you know, lie low when you don't know anything. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Focus on the fight. Mm-hmm and he's like really thought they'd be sending me to spy if i couldn't defend myself but your patrol bunch are the crazy ones marching straight into a ship filled with explosives like it's nothing and he's you know fighting in the meanwhile and then there's this guy with a knife and march just effortlessly march i think that's no, kim. kim sorry kim kim sorry. yeah <laughs> um Gotta look kim for the, wisp of the blue hair <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and she's like the upside is that you're saving on hairdresser fees when your ends <laughs> are constantly fried by nearby explosions <laughs> Classic Kim. <laughs> Hilarious. Sounds good. And March is like, fair enough, I guess. And then he says in red, hopefully this will be the last time. That is pretty darn suspicious. <laughs> Very sus. Yeah. It is. So he's not hoping it'll be the last time, and he probably has reason to suspect there will be more. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Wait, wait, yes. wait. This is just like confirmation that Will and Kim maybe will have more about opportunities. Yes. That's true. That is true. Yeah. More more explosions, more gunfights means more opportunities for us to get our troopy, passionate Kiwi kiss in the middle of danger. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, if any of the ships have a passionate kiss in the middle of danger, I will think of this moment and I'll come into this group chat again and be like, ladies, how are we feeling oh, about this? Absolutely. I, I want I want kiss in the middle of danger for both kiwi and Loki. i'm just like have also belarsi why not yeah, just have all Belarsi's the ships too all the ships like have all of the Lula ships kiss it, but, but we'll find a way ship. like obviously lucas is an officer you know lila is, is just a secretary but but you know maybe something unexpected happens and you know lucas saves her and then they kiss i don't know i just dakistan can Call also kiss in the, in the middle yeah. of danger why not it's just <laughs> expediate like a massive explosion the whole art hall <laughs> line them all up and there they go they all can exactly we have like the exactly. swell of the score in the background the butler and lady a why not yes yeah why not just everyone <laughs> we've had no kisses Especially, in this. 
it'll be a special Valentine's Day episode, you know, a giant <laughs> explosion. Happy and then you have all the various, in. exactly, and then all the various ships all over, all over our tallest. Just, <laughs> wow, we should not write Purple Eyes. <laughs> no. We'd be too oh, um, self-interested. We'll be too, um, what's the word I'm looking for? like i forget the word i'm looking for but it's like we'd be too focused on like making it mushy and cute and like mm. self like we're, things that we want and not what the story needs right right <laughs> that's that's why i stick to fan fiction <laughs> because <laughs> no one judges that <laughs> mm-hmm. and now lauren's mm. like ask how he learned the delivery would be there tonight and will's like hey <laughs> casually <laughs> how'd you find out the delivery was moved here <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Ollie's handcuffing someone. Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> Just a random thought that occurred to me while we're shooting out all these bad guys. I know. Oh, it's hilarious. And then March lies and says, I got close to one of the guys involved in the planning. Yeah, like yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Oliver. Uh, Oliver. I'm using his first name. <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> what are you doing? Jack on yes. high is the externalized self. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I told them I'd help them dodge police eyes. No, you didn't. Let them straight here after us instead. Haha. <laughs> He's like, he has a smirk on his face. Oh my god, seriously, <laughs> it's true. Oh, my brother are... in Christ, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, he has like no eyes now, they're shadowed. Mm. So it's like creepy. It is, yeah. The, the little smirk, the the shadow out, shadow out eyes, the prominent scar on his cheek. It's like, okay, March, what's what, what are you doing, March? What's going on? <laughs> yep. And Lauren's like, lies. Ask if this is really the last delivery the Phantom Scythe is expecting. <laughs> Once again, Will is just like, is this the last delivery the Phantom Scythe is expecting? <laughs> uh, I sure hope casually. it's not natural. Yeah, I mean, let's hope he's a good like actor like how we let it say and said you know about any more that are coming like <laughs> yeah i mean i think since since march you know is a, a spy or at least that's his, his cover story um i think it's, it's not super unreasonable to be asking him those things since he is expected to have knowledge of that um in in the middle of a gunfight is a little bit like it's now you you might think if he was just if they truly believe he was a spy, I'd be like, "Is this really the time?" Right. Um, but but hopefully, March isn't isn't too suspicious. Of, he doesn't of, look suspicious. Will, yeah, he he doesn't. He also he looks like it's just like yeah, understandable to be asking that since it was his job to find out. <laughs> yeah, and he then he lies and says, "To my knowledge, yeah, everything should be here: weapons, ammunition, nitro. Hopefully, packed real effing safe." It's the first time we heard that first by the way. Now, oh, that's true. Episode. Yeah, March, another one to add to the tally. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to update my tally and make sure that everything is all good. I'm pretty sure Kim is still in the lead, but you know, of course she is. I I love that for her. It it does not surprise me that, that I mean, Kim for the longest is leading time, the swear count. For the longest time, Will was in first. Yeah, which is up insane. until right before the factory log, he had the mm. most, which wow. is surprising. Yeah, uh, yeah, I would not have expected that. Um, Neither but I. I mean, I mean, good for him, I guess. You know, he's he's kind of repressed. The poor boy, he needs an outlet, and I guess that outlet is swearing. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Raised like a lord and swears like a sailor. Yeah. Uh, well, March, and then he. Uh, oh my gosh! So while Lauren is standing up and with her stuff on the radio, suddenly we hear step, step, step outside, and <laughs> then we, she, you know, she starts taking up her headphones. But she hears the last of what they could afford to purchase in any case, and it is a lie. And she is looking at the door, and then we see boots. We see two pairs of boots. Um. We like a brown one and a black one, and they I'm are sorry. going down the stairs. I didn't notice there were two. Oh yeah, now I just noticed that now. I noticed the two. two yeah, shoes later on, but there's a, another there. shoot down in the hallway where you can mm-hmm. see it better. Yeah, and then she's like, Officer Johnson and Officer Russell. Like I said, I'd be fine by myself. You don't need to come down. Oh my god, this is like so spooky. And then we have the radio, and then they're just walking down again. It's the brown boots and the black shoes, and she's like, Officer Johnson and Officer Russell, and then you see this great perspective um the officer one of them is on the floor blood pulling out looks like a gunshot to the to the like side of the forehead whatever it's called Mm -hmm. and the radio's on the floor and it's like oh darn yeah 
You see both Ooh. of them there. They're both dead. Um, well, 99.9% .9 dead. <laughs> uh, on the floor with blood oozing out of them. And then you see the ones again. Shh, and then Lauren, like, she stands up. She is petrified. <laughs> She's like, there's like the tap, tap, tap. And then you see the hear the steps. And then you see a hand <laughs> coming toward the doorknob. Oh! <laughs> ba -ba. And that's how uh -huh. they end it. Exactly. Oh, honestly. Yeah. No, it's uh I mean what the moment I saw those guys outside of Lauren's door, I was like, those those guys are red shirts. They're they're not living to to, to see the light of day much longer. No. Um <laughs> like, why would they show that? It's like, oh these guys are like, I'm so bored. I'm like, you're gonna die so oh, soon. I know, it's just like 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 I, those you're just classic example of red shirts, but <laughs> <sighs> all right so who do we think this is oh my god i have spent so long trying to think about this and i am still not sure <laughs> so i'll tell you why if you think it isn't um some people yeah are like, oh, i have in coming to you know check on her but mm -hmm. no kieran wouldn't kill those guards exactly um, there's two people there mm -hmm. and, and kieran wouldn't be coming with anyone else either um I also, I don't think it's Bella. I've also seen people theorize that, but it's... It, no, I mean, that is not... We lost... It It looks more like a man's hand, also like, like two pairs of, of men's feet, mm -hmm. and also just like shoes. We lost saw Bella wearing heels. Bella generally wears heels. <laughs> um, so I don't think it's Kira. I don't think it's Bella. Um, I also, I mean, I have kind of speculated because I, if... Like, it, I was saying this in, in the Discord uh, yesterday, um... You know, it, it does seem like suspense is sort of being built up. It's like, oh, who is that? But also, I could see it as just the suspense being built up about, like, what's happening to Lauren. And so I don't know if it's necessarily going to be a shocking reveal as to, like, who that hand actually is. Like, I feel like it, it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if it's just, like, a, a random phantom-sized thug. Right. And the suspense yeah. is not like, ooh, who's who's that mystery person? But more just like, oh, crap, Lauren is, is in serious danger. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, same. danger, girl. Ugh. Right. Like, My first thought was that. I thought it was just random PS people coming to kidnap her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I saw a lot of theorizing about yeah, who it might be. And no, none of the none of the characters which I actually know, which I can think of, really fit the the information which we have, which is why I'm kind of inclined to believe that it's just, yeah, some some random phantoms. Um I'm sure it'll connect to something bigger, but I think those two <laughs> specific people might just be randos mm. Mm. well my thinking like it could be randos because we know that the leader is trying to get certain people in certain places to get certain things done certain targets that was mm -hmm. from like two episodes ago mm -hmm. but we also know that Radcliffe has his own plans going on that are like have to do with the royals mm -hmm. now since yeah which we don't know what they are <laughs> yeah since he's apparently working with them um or not oh, or working against them we still have no idea <laughs> yeah yeah right. it's, it's a little confusing <laughs> mysterious and then like we don't know if Dokken is in on the royals plan to like that when they took um and tortured redcliffe so it's like did Dokken know about this did he give lauren's position because who else would have known about where she was mm -hmm. that's a good point i don't want to i don't want to suspect Dokken. Dokken. i know boy. I know. I've 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 been struggling with that for so long as well. I feel like I've I've been so scared that either Dawkins is gonna be that he's dead or that Dawkins is gonna somehow turn out to be bad. Like I don't I don't wanna believe it. I love Dawkins. I love my adorable gay uncles Dakistan, but I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Like Tristan I think is is safe, at least in terms of, of being evil. I think yeah. Tristan is definitely a good guy. Um I'm also I feel like between Tristan and Dawkins, I think Dawkins is more likely to die just because I feel like killing off Tristan would have a bigger impact on Lauren it would just be like so I mean Doc and Dying would also be horrible for her yeah. but I feel like Tristan Dying would just be like so traumatic he's her, last, her last family last relative exactly yeah. um so I feel like Tristan I'm I think is relatively safe both in terms of being good and staying alive but Doc and I don't I want him to be good and I want him to live but I'm so scared that he's either gonna die or turn out to be a bad guy <laughs> yeah same I've had your exact same thoughts right down to he's her lost blood relative he like killing him would just be like assault in the wound that I don't think Lauren could recover from yeah like... no especially because so... I feel like obviously Tristan is is her uncle 
Dokken as her godfather, but Tristan has kind of taken on the role of father figure for her mm-hmm. primarily. I feel like Dokken is more of an uncle figure in a sense of like, obviously she loves him and she deeply cares about him, but you know, Tristan is the one she lives with. Tristan is the one who primarily raised her after her parents died. Um, and uh, yeah, Tristan, killing Tristan would just kind of be like killing her parents all over again. And I just, I don't really see how that could happen without like a very deep impact on Lauren, something which she would not really be able to recover from. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I want to read the theory that Emily posted oh, yes, on Twitter. Definitely. So she says, Hecate warns Kieran that he should fear the gods, not the PS. This was a bit ago. The gods being the members of the Pantheon. It very much looks like Artemis and Zephyr were at Loki's date. Mm-hmm. If you look back, there's two figures and at different tables on the left side, and it kind of does look like them. It does. It does. Yes. Meaning that they know that Kieran has a soft spot for Lauren. And Raphael is part of the Pantheon as Apollo, and he's Messenger 7, which means first and foremost, I think he works for Redcliffe more than the leader. Remember that Redcliffe said he would find the Purple Hyacinth's weakness and exploit it. The Pantheon is already in play, as the Messenger tells the leader. Maybe this is what Hecate meant when Kieran should fear the gods because they are watching him like they did at the date. Too long didn't read. I think Lauren's getting kidnapped by a Pantheon member. Definitely. I think that is a, a very plausible theory as well. Um, yeah, no. I completely forgot about the... It is um, not the phantoms you should fear, but the gods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That yes. feels... Because I at the time, I was like, why would he be afraid of the gods? Because there was like a reference to like finding her with the balloons, but that didn't feel quite right either at the time. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was yeah. also... <laughs> that was also my thoughts. Because yeah, when first reading that episode, I just sort of thought it was because, oh, you know, because Lauren is, is you know, lost, and they're in the middle of the circus, they're surrounded by the gods. But then, yeah, I was like, but there's not really any real reason for him to fear them during that episode. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, no, I think it makes a lot of sense for it to be a warning for the future rather than that specific moment. And so, honestly, I am so down for Lauren being kidnapped by, by uh, the Pantheon. Like, I'm all for it. Again, kidnapping, sure, it's a trope. I don't care. I want to see Lauren get kidnapped. I want to see Kieran freak out and, like, just go on an absolute rage spree to save her. I'm just like, ugh, I love it. Give me it. Give me. Give it to me. Yeah, no. Give it to me. (laughs) We've been talking about it as well. Just being like, either one of them just get kidnapped and let the other one get out, please. And I'm just thinking about him and Will, like, telling Kieran that Lauren was kidnapped. Or, like, him and them going to him because Kim knows that he is her loon partner. So I think mm-hmm. them telling him one would be to like, you know, gauge his reaction, gauge like, yes. how, like but then also to kind of be like, listen, let's try and get her back. Mm-hmm. You know them better than anybody. But at that point, he's going to be so like freaked out and mad and like frustrated and desperate that maybe he'll just be like, you don't understand. I'm not just any Phantom Scythe member. I am the purple eye. <laughs> and then cut have that be like him just say that in front of them and that's it and then like oh man imagine if they ended the season like that i don't think ooh. he would tell them i think yet I, I don't see the connection like why would he suddenly tell them i don't know maybe definitely he's very like dramatic, pissed though. off and self-loathing is hitting him again because he told her to lay low and it, even uh. when she was laying low she still got caught maybe he would have been like she should have stayed in the cave like we were shouting at him to do <laughs> <laughs> maybe but I don't yeah, know. I'm I, I, me and I'm my tropes, totally... they don't always make sense. Just like emotions. Right. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. No, I'm I'm all for that. Like, yeah, I think re- realistically, I don't really know how that would would play out or if it makes sense. But like sometimes I'm like, you know what? For I don't care. It sounds like fun. And I sometimes I just want that. I just want the the delicious tropes that I that I know and love. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, I could see it as like they know that he's highly skilled in this stuff, but even maybe just like his resources maybe the fact that he maybe pulls out a sword and it's just like wait mm. who's the assassin that uses a sword mm. like I, mean, I don't know definitely I think also I mean uh, I feel like if, if Kim and Will start thinking about it too much I think they could easily put pieces together I mean obviously you know that the, if they think back like okay Lauren <laughs> is Loon Lauren is involved with Phantom Scythe member how would this have happened hmm there was that time when you know, Lauren chased down the purple hyacinth. For some reason, she managed to escape. She wasn't killed, which like is 
is rare. You know, Kim in the very first episode, Kim was terrified that Lauren was going to be killed since and it's the Kyle Hyacinth. They have the description. They have the description. That's true. That's true. Them. And so I feel like, especially since Kim is so observant, I mean, Will too, but we see it more with, with Kim. I feel like if Kim starts seriously thinking about it, I could definitely see her putting pieces together as a Kieran's real identity, um, just based on, yeah, the information which she already has, based on, you know, she she's already suspected Kieran of being uh, Lauren's loon partner, and I feel like from there, it's not that hard for her to think, wait a second, if, so we, he's putting him aside, like, could he be perhaps, like, like the, the, the purple hyacinth? You know, it kind of kind of fits up. I th- I could see Kim coming to that revelation. Yeah, and then just kind of being freaked out because it's like he's not just Kieran the archivist anymore, or Kieran <laughs> Lauren's partner. He's Kieran the purple hyacinth who's murdered countless people, especially for Will, because he, as far as Will knows, Kieran just murdered his fake girlfriend. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. No, honestly, mm. I feel so bad for Will. Like, I feel like Will. Mm. Will and Kim both need to be brought into the loop. I mean, I want mm-hmm. I want Eclipse team up. I think I mean I just think it'll be so much fun. But also I'm like for the sake of Kim and, and Will, they need to be brought into things. I mean, you know, we had right before Kim got poisoned, she was, you know, yelling at Lauren like to stop hiding things and to actually let her in. And yeah, now we have Will who I mean he's already dealing with his shitty father and knowing that his you know his his abandon his uh, brother who abandoned him and i'm sure he'll find out eventually that Raphael is apollo and now Neyra is dead dead and mm-hmm. i'm just like poor will has been through so much just like please just like someone let him in on things someone just tell him what's going on um and stop keeping him in the dark <laughs> yeah this boy's mm-hmm. been through enough giving him more trust issues on top of that is not gonna help exactly and like he he deserves to, i mean i know lauren tried to tell Will, presumably tried to tell him, she just said she had something to tell him, it was presumably about his brother being uh, Messenger 7, and then March interrupted. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, Lauren, you need to you need to try again a little bit harder to, to <laughs> let Will know about his brother. Well, and I don't have, have a chance word. anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. She might not, but but yeah, I'm just, I'm just hoping that Kim and Will will kind of be brought into the fold, partly because I think seeing, I mean, I just, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Eclipse fan, like I want the Lauren, Kieran, Kim, and Will team up. I want them mm-hmm. to just like be badasses together. Um, and then and also the long panels where they're all standing in like their poses mm-hmm. with their guns and stuff. Oh yes, to, like yeah, the guns and Kieran with a his sword, and they're just like, uh, it would be so good. And, yeah. All standing like like back to back, in a little like circle, you know, facing down countless enemies. Be like, yeah, we got this. Like how it was in the factory, <laughs> but they know who each other is. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh, I just think it would be so cool. And also, I just think it poor Will and poor Kim have been through enough yes. and have a lot of trauma and a lot of trust issues. I'm like, please, just, just somebody just let them in. Just tell them what's going on. <laughs> well, I mean, this would tie into, you know, you saying that it's too obvious that March is the betrayer. One mm. of the other theories is that Will is the betrayer. Because yes. of how, uh, how, he's, how he's left out like this. And I've I've speculated that as well. I, I go back and forth about whether or not I think Will is the betrayer, because I feel like, on the one hand, I think it does somewhat fit, but also I feel like there's there's been a lot of, like, character growth with Will in terms of, like, you know, trying to, like, break free from his father's influence, and I feel like when he found out that Lauren was alone, he was supportive, and I feel like, I don't know, I... I, I think he could be the betrayer, but also, like, if he is, I don't no, like how how would that work I, with with his character development? How would it not like set him back too far? I'm not really sure. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I don't think that he. I mean, I can see it. It would be really tragic if that happens, but I don't really understand how that would fit with his arc or like the whole concept of the betrayer being right in front of her the whole time. Like Will has not mm-hmm. in any mm-hmm. way indicated that he would betray her in any sort of way but I guess that's like you know the whole thing but it's supposed to be like open your eyes like Mm -hmm. but Will doesn't really have anything that shows that he could he would betray her right now you know watch us be wrong yeah that's true like (laughs) that's true (laughs) but I yeah point stands I don't think that it's Will I could I've seen I've seen it thrown around that it could be like her but that wouldn't be like the most blindsiding thing for Lauren Lauren doesn't like it (laughs) (laughs) yeah 
No, it's interesting. Because, yeah, if it's not March, I'm not really sure. I don't have that a strong is. theory. <laughs> That's true. That is true. I mean, I, yeah, I, that, that, could, that could work. I, I don't, I really, I don't want it to be Doctor. I love him so much, uh, but I'm. Well, that's I'm, why it'll be devastating. Uh, that's true. So, it'll be devastating for long and readers. <laughs> that's true. No, I think, I think Dokken is definitely a strong possibility. Um, I think especially, I mean, I, yeah, since we've gotten kind of some like cute Lauren Dokken moments recently, like when he was congratulating her on, you know, solving Blair's case and like he gave her like a kiss on the forehead and so her be safe. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, all of this is kind of building up. I it's 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 making me worried that Duncan is either going to die or mm. be turn out to be like a bad guy and betray her. Because I'm just like, we're we're getting it's yeah, it's like why why are we now getting all these cute Lauren Duncan moments? It just it makes me scared that they're reminding us, like, oh hey, look how cute Lauren and her godfather are, just to rip it away from us. Yeah. Aww. Also, poor Tristan. I know, Tristan, I, I really know think about this. I don't want his heart. I I really, I really, I really hope it's not Dokken. I'm very, very much scared that it might be because I think it does fit. I'm just like, please, I don't want it to be him. Uh, let's rather March. Great, let's keep March. <laughs> and then there's the yeah. Bachiran theory, which no, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't no. think, I don't think Bachiran fits anymore. Yeah. I think there's, there's too, too many. I think it, it, it worked it as a theory sense. early on, maybe, but I feel like at this point, it would, it just wouldn't work. I mean, it would completely obliterate Lauren's trust in him. Like if if Bichir in theory were true, he would have needed to tell Lauren about it many many arcs ago, yeah. many seasons ago. Like at this point, if it if it came out that he had actually been yet yeah, ordered to get close to her by the leader, like it would it would ruin any chance of the lucky ship ever happening because she would just be like, "Well, screw you! <laughs> like I'm we not working with it. you. We need and, it. We need it." And also, I mean, Soph and F have directly confirmed that Purple Eyes is a slow burn romance, and so I'm like, okay. we haven't we haven't. <laughs> Like I know, because I went to uh, MCM London Comic Con, uh-huh. and the oh. sign by the oh. the booth, which of course our has a couple highs, and then it mentioned like you know, the Jonathan like, like mystery, like 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 action. I can't remember. And one of the things it mentioned was slow burn romance. So I'm like, well, yes, it could be we the have other ships, by the way. It could be that is true. Oh. Yeah, that is true. We have but... the main ship. That is. Hang on, I need to sit up for this. We have the main <laughs> ship, oh, and they. The first two episodes, they have you could have killed me, like, and then he has like the sword up, and they're standing, and it's oh. like, and it's just like, of course they're the main. Ship. Yeah, of I mean, I feel like there's be the slow burn. We get the hand on the cheek. How can we not? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's they've been teasing it for so long, and then also with you know the purple highest in the store, and so we've had the mm-hmm. section of like you know manifest Ken and Lockie by buying Lockie merch. Like, I'm just like, there's there's. There's no way it's not going to eventually happen. Like, I don't know how much longer it'll take, but it's clearly headed in the direct, that direction. And it's clearly going to happen. It's just an issue of when it's going to happen and how it's going to first come about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like bitchy in theory just does not make any sense to me. So like, it, it, just, yeah. it, just, it just doesn't fit. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I'm just, like, you know, throwing things out there. Yeah. <laughs> adding, you know, adding things to discuss. Um, yes. I don't know. I feel like now the number one suspect is now Dakin, and that makes my heart sad. I don't want. I to know. Remember. Please say it isn't uh, so. I know. I'd rather uh, be Marks than Dakin. Just, just. Oh, same. Mark. Absolutely. I, I honestly like. I, I like March. He's he's a good guy, and like you know, of course, it it hurts for Lauren to have her mentor and sort of role model and in some ways uncle figure turn out to betray her, but. It's it's less of a harsh betrayal than with Dokken. And also just personally, I like March, but I love Dokken even more. So I'm just like, for my own selfish reasons, I don't want it to be Dokken. <laughs> we are in agreement as well. March is great. Dokken is one of her one of her gay dads. And I do exactly. not want to see him die. He seems like and a Doc good is, guy. And Doc and Senator is so cute. I love their relationship. I just I mm. love the wholesome gay uncles. I'm like, please just let them stay wholesome gay uncles. Mm-hmm. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> all yes. right so what's our favorite panel Look, here the our... one behind you with lauren being yes. like oh shit that's my favorite yeah. that is and a good one all, the whole you know stretch yeah i'm not sure i i like that one a lot um i also really love the panel of of kiwi just sort of exchanging a little flirty gaze yeah. in the middle yes. of the gunfight <laughs> it's just yes, like it's a a love that love that for them just a, a mm-hmm. nice little kiwi moment in the middle of all this danger in action <laughs> Yeah, no, uh-huh. I love that one too. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm trying to scroll to find it, but yeah, that is also. It's near the top ish. Yeah. Our babies. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was super fun. It's always fun. Mm-hmm. And nice to be on an episode with Mossy for once. Yes, fun. yes. Nice to nice to finally have ups with you as well. Of course, I've I've watched a lot of the the previous podcast episodes, but I've only done a few myself. So it's mm-hmm. it's fun. Yeah, getting to talk with with more of the regulars. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, and have a good night, ladies. Yeah. Yes. Good night. And good morning for you, Mossy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to my current patrons, Susie, Lady Libris, Lily, Molly, Veronica, Emily, Joe, Rochelle, Saucy Toggles, Anne, Rose, Alexa, Misty, Joanne, Esther, I'm watching you people, Emily, Jean, Kay, Lily, Beckett, Christine, Sadie, Teresa, Mrs. Castaldo, Amapora, and Alicia. Thank you so much. Your support is truly appreciated.